Welcome back to another episode with Pixel Web. Today I'm going to continue on the topic of optimizing WordPress for greater speed and performance. And in a previous episode, we covered a cache plugin that's very simple to use. It's extremely um, beneficial because it's pretty, you know, easy to set up. You just install it, activate it, click a couple of options and you're done and it really does improve the speed of your site now today i'm going to show you another plugin uh, that does the same thing so i am going back to my personal blog here this is not my company blog this is my personal blog and i'm going to you know uh show you that i did in fact delete the other plugin i'm going there to install plugins and it's no longer there all right so and I also optimized the database and I, you know, refreshed everything to make it, you know, pristine. So now I'm going to test out. Well, first, let me copy this because I'm going to want to use two different versions. All right. So let's make sure they're the same server, New York and New York. All right. All right. So I'm going to want to copy the URL. I'm going to paste it here just to show you the results of a clean baseline. This is, has no optimization uh, built into it, no code uh, to enhance the speed, and no plugins to, to um, serve it faster. So, okay, so this is the baseline. It's a little bit slower than previously, but, you know, that can change and fluctuate a little bit um, throughout the day, depending on usage. So maybe some people are visiting the site now, and, you know, that can have a slight impact. So this is our baseline. 1.85 seconds, 75% faster than all other tested sites. So it's not bad, but you know we can we should try to get this lower if possible. So the way to do that is we're gonna go back to the dashboard. We're gonna go to plugins, we're gonna click on add new, and then we're going to look for this plugin right here, WP Super Cache or Cache. It's built by Automatic. Uh, which is the company behind wordpress.com and um, you know wordpress.org so if you look at it in the more details you can see it's installed in over 1 million plus active installations has a uh, pretty good rankings within the um, the rating system and it has a lot of features pretty much what it does it generates static HTML fi HTML files from your dynamic WordPress blog so we're going to install this and we're going to go through the options. We're going to activate it. And then you get this notice WP super cache cache is disabled. Please go to the plugin admin page to enable caching. All right. So we're going to start looking to, um, enhance this, uh, this site with the WP super cache. So when we click on that, just remember it's in settings, WP super cache. Uh, we're going to be pre uh, presented with this first initial page. Um, so we're going to start off first by checking off this uh, radio button here, Cacheing On. It's recommended. It's the purpose of installing this plugin. And we're going to update the status. So that's going to take effect. All right, so you can test the cache here, or we can go on to other features. So we're going to do the advanced tab now. So let's go through some of these uh, some of these tests here, these options. So cache hits to this website for quick access, recommended. So we're going to leave that checked off. Um, we're going to leave the use PHP to serve cache files uh, checked off. This is very important because this helps to ensure that um, your website can serve you know some content that needs, still needs to remain dynamic and things of that nature. So we're going to leave this checked. It's recommended, so might as well keep it easy. And then we're going to go down to miscellaneous. This first one here, compressed pages, so they're served more quickly to visitors. Recommended, so let's check that off. Let's see this one, 304, not modified browser cache. Indicate when a page has not been modified since it was last requested. Let's check that. We're going to not cache pages for known users. And we're not going to cache the pages with get param with these uh, parameters 
with the get parameters. And we're not doing that because if you have any type of form that, you know, is going to be asking for information, it might have some get parameters. So we're just going to check this off just in case. Okay, so we're going to leave this cache rebuild, serve a super cache file to anonymous users while a new file is being generated, recommended, leave that like that. And then we're going to continue downwards into some of the, some of the other options as well. All right, so we're going to look at, we're going to look to clear all cache files when a post or page is published. We're going to do, click on this option here, extra homepage checks. And we're going to continue down with these options just to take a look at them. All right, everything seems to be okay. We can leave it the way it currently is set up. Okay, so we are going to update the status with these latest changes. Now, some of these other options, um, you can enable CDN support if you have a CDN, but we're not going to cover that in this episode. Um, but definitely it's, you know, recommended if you have a global audience to use that. And then this shows you the cache contents, the amount of uh, pages that are cached, expired pages, things of that nature. Preloading, this will cache every published post and page on your site. It will create super cache static files so unknown visitors, including bots, will hit a cached page. This will probably help your Google rankings as they are using speed as a metric when judging websites now. So this is straight from there. So we're going to, in this area, uh, take a look at some of the options. Now, if you do have a very large uh, website with tens of thousands of posts, you, you might may want to double check this because doing this preloading, it creates a lot of files. Um, so, you know, this can cause issues in super large websites. Uh, but if you have a medium to small size website, this is definitely a good option. So we're going to take a look at this refresh preloaded cache files every. So you can set this to whatever makes sense for your site. Um, so let's say uh, just for argument's sake, 300 uh, minutes. All right. So we're going to click or check off this area preload mode. Garbage collection only on legacy cache files. It's recommended. You can choose to preload the tags, categories, and taxonomies if you want. You could also choose to have uh, the emails sent to you when files are refreshed. And then you could also designate how many emails, you know, to send to you. All right. So you can update the settings there as well. Plugins. You can also cache a plugin. Cache plugins are PHP scripts that live in a plugins folder inside the WP Super Cache folder. Uh, they are loaded when Super Cache loads much sooner than regular WordPress plugins. So you can take a look at this page. Awaiting moderation, bad behavior, domain mapping. Some of these things you can uh, you know check off to see if they're relevant to your to your website. And then you also have the debugging mode. You can ha enable debugging if you need. So we're going to go back here. We're going to update the status just in case. And then we're going to go to the front of the site and make sure everything works. All right, it works. So let's copy our URL again. Let's take a look at our results here from our previous scan. And you see 78, 1.85 seconds, 75%. All right, so we're going to start the test. Put in our URL there. We're going to click on Start Test. We're going to see what the results are. It's going to process it. As you can see, it does increase our performance grade to 81. Our load time is reduced down to 892 milliseconds. And our website is faster than 92% of all tested websites. Now, this does vary a little bit from our previous results with the other plugin. Not by much, but it does vary some. Um, it could be for various reasons, some of the configurations, the way I set it up, or it can be just at this point in time, the website could be visited by a whole lot more concurrent visitors. So that can impact load time. But you can see that it does uh, decrease the load time significantly. So this test was for WP Super Cache, which is a great cache plugin. It's a little bit more involved than the other plugin. This is 
considered like the intermediate cache plugin. Um, but you can see that it definitely does help in terms of the performance grade, uh, the load time, and the speed versus other websites being tested. Significant benefits in all aspects. So should you use this plugin? I think you should. Um, you know, WP Fastest Cache is a great plugin. You know, it's easy to use, but so is uh, WP Super Cache. And the real difference between the two is WP Super Cache is, uh, does support the multi-site setup of WordPress installations. WP Fastest Cache does not support the multi-site multi setup. So that's one of the main differences. Um, so if you're running a standard installation of WordPress, then you might want to go with the WP Fastest Cache, as that might give you a little bit easier configuration of the plugin itself. Otherwise, WP Super Cache is also a very good plugin, as you can see based on the results here. Um, the website loads just fine. Uh, it, there is no issues in terms of usage on this site, which you wouldn't generally have. I mean, you know, most of these plugins are tested. These are not new plugins that have been introduced. They are, you know, tested plugins that have been around for a significantly long time. They're, they're active on a lot of uh, WordPress installations and have proven to, you know, be durable and do exactly what it needs to do. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this episode where we covered WP Super Cache. It's an easy-to-use plugin uh, with a couple of more features and configuration than the other plugin I introduced you to, but definitely has its benefits, especially if you have a multi-site setup of WordPress. All right, so give us a thumbs up if you like this video and leave us your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below, and I'll take a look at that. And don't forget to subscribe because over the next few episodes, I'll continue the conversation about how to optimize your WordPress powered website for increased speed and performance. Google wants faster websites, users want faster websites, so it makes sense to give everybody what they want, faster websites. All right, I hope to see you in the next episode. Take care.